everybody from our home setup uh, at our places of work and at the community level. And uh, more specifically, I am glad to see at least a, a few of the deans of schools who have logged in for this training because we have a rising concern of uh, students losing lives through road uh, incidents and accidents. So as we are attending this training today, let's be ambassadors of our own wherever we have an opportunity in the class setup. When we're interacting with students, we pass uh, the information of uh, overseeing road safety in all uh, areas of operation. Uh, we are also in the process of finalizing the policy that will guide uh, road safety activities at KIS University. Uh, we will be bringing it up to you, the stakeholders, for your input. We wish to also remind you that at that point when we'll do that, kindly go through the document and uh, give as much input as possible so that then uh, we journey together because road safety issues is a matter of concern for us all. We are here today <coughs> uh, to join uh, part of the this week we started on 17th through 23rd. We are celebrating the global uh, road safety week. And uh, I'm glad that we are able to enjoy this training today uh, so that it's part of the activities that we are doing to mark the road safety week by sensitizing the top management of the university uh, so that as we move out, as you see activities taking place, keep in mind that road safety starts from us, from home, because a majority of us, even here at the university, drive vehicles. And as we drive here, we are we, we have to comply with the regulations as provided by NTSA and uh, in the policy that we are finalizing for the university. So without much ado, I know much is going to be said by the, our trainer from NTSA. Allow me uh, to welcome our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Research and Student Affairs, Professor Frederick Wanyama, who is uh, representing the Vice Chancellor to make a few remarks and uh, open this session. Welcome, Professor Wanyama. Thank you very much, uh, Acting Registrar. And uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I, I hope you are uh, safe where you are and uh, fine. We are here, fine. First and foremost, uh, I wish to bring the apology of the Vice Chancellor, who was supposed to preside over this conference, but uh, he is uh, not available because of other activities in the university. So he is with him, but he's unable to join us for this particular function. So he is. Uh, uh, a firm support of road safety and would have wished to be here. But unfortunately, we cannot make it much further in other activities going on. However, uh, we have to feel to carry the activity on because of it is important to all of us. Uh, there is no way in this age that we can avoid using roads. And actually, roads are currently being used not just for transport, but uh, they are also being used as a, a facility for interaction, a facility for uh, doing other activities, businesses, and so on. Um, and so, roads are at the center of our lives currently. And we need to maintain the roads safe. If they are not safe, then all of us are also not safe. And that, that is the significance of the roads. Unfortunately, we are losing lives on the roads, as the registrar has been Just yesterday, I seen the news of the students who lost to the roads. And we cannot afford to lose Life in the era where we are talking about sustainable development. 
we also have need to try that sustains lives ourselves. We need to be in existence and well. And since the roads are at the center of our lives, then it's really important that we keep the roads safe. We avoid accidents as much as possible. Because on the roads, those are actually at the threats to our lives. The winner on the road, accidents. And uh, this week, as we celebrate the road safety week uh, globally, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that uh, the UN is promoting limiting speed to touch with the slogan of love touch as the main thing. Uh, the effort of limiting speed to 30 is actually minimizing the possibility of an accident in the road. And when that is eliminated, then we are safe on the roads. And uh, this is an agenda that we as a university union base can support. But we want to enhance that agenda of making our roads safe. And uh, as an indication of this, we now have in the university the Road Safety Committee that is working out on various uh, ways by which we can reduce speed on the roads, especially those that are uh, we have more people interacting, so that we, we, we mind the lives of people. And uh, the Road Safety Committee has uh, hit the road running. As you have heard from the registrar, the right uh, policy that guide our students, uh, our staff, our drivers, whenever they are on the road, to ensure that we are all safe. And uh, we shall also put in place some uh, procedures uh, that we have to follow while we are on the road. And uh, besides that, we should go further. Because when we are on the roads, it's not just this university, but probably there are also other, other users of the roads. Some of the roads may not be aware, some of the users of the roads may not be aware of uh, the, the, the impact of their actions when they are on the roads. And so we may need to go beyond the policy that really helps us for our own, our own internal operations to also enlighten the other who are using the roads. So we may need the sensitization of road users to the importance or significance of uh, maintaining safety on the roads. We do hope that when that message is shared, then uh, all of us will be safe. So we hope that uh, the Road Safety Committee will go beyond uh, the tunnel to the what is in tunnel to the university and also try to help the other people outside to realize the dangers of their actions when they are in the road. When all of us are aware, we do believe that everybody will uh, act within the confines of, of what is permissible, what is acceptable. That way we should be set up. So I don't have much more than that, other than to thank the NTSA uh, for partnering with us on this agenda. Uh, for taking up this task of uh, also enlightening us on how to keep the roads safer. And uh, the partnership is, uh, is really an addition for our activities as we strive to make the roads safer. So thank you, MTSA, for this partnership. And we we'll look forward to working with you on other events, activities that can enhance the safety of our roads. So I just want to welcome everybody to this session. And with these few remarks, I wish to declare the training officially open. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, for the DBC. Uh, before we hand over uh, the program to NTSA to take it over. We have a small uh, uh, commitment that uh, the DVC will make on uh, his own behalf and on behalf of the institution. There is an open letter that is called Streets for Life for People and Planet. 
uh, that is currently the commitment we are having in terms of it. The DBC will uh, sign the commitment on behalf uh, of June, but before it signs, for the rest of us who are here, I would just like to read what the commitment says so that uh, when you get a chance to get the document yourself, because we will try and get this to you also to make that commitment uh, and remind you of that commitment. If you can, please, once you have signed it, you can frame it, put it somewhere on your office wall, and uh, you can be able to remind yourself of it. It says, on our streets worldwide where we walk, play and live, we call for action on speed. Low speed, livable streets are essential and urgent. Urgent because low speeds save lives. Urgent for public health. By making, by making walking and cycling safer and more accessible, enabling and encouraging healthy lifestyles, livable streets are more crucial than ever as we respond to COVID-19. Urgent for the global goals and for our climate as a key that unlocks a virtual cycle of zero carbon active travel shifting from car dependence, enabling thriving public transportation, cleaner air, and lower CO2 emissions. Urgent for social and racial equity, as it is lower income and minority communities who are most exposed to high speed traffic and the road danger, environmental hazard, and social exclusion it causes. Urgent for the rights of people with disabilities, for the elderly, for all who are vulnerable. Urgent for our children and youth, and vital for their well-being. They are most at risk on the streets where they live, play and travel to school. Every day, 3,000 children and young people are killed or seriously injured on the world's roads. A child hit by a car at 30 kilometers per hour can survive. Hit at 80 kilometers per hour, most will die. Speed kills. The 2020 Stockholm Declaration, adopted by governments worldwide, calls for a focus on livable streets and, in line with available evidence, a maximum road travel speed of 30 kilometers where vulnerable road users and vehicles meet. Commitment to this approach must be at the forefront of the new decade of action for road safety to achieve the global goals. Now is the time to urgently deliver on this call to action by reducing, designing, and enforcing tra traffic speeds that are safe for everyone. Everywhere, prioritizing low speeds streets in all residential areas and near schools. Streets for health, streets for climate, streets for people, we must act together to create streets for life. And then the DVC will read uh, the next part, which has his name. And then after reading, we will sign, and then we will officially hand over the program to NTSA to begin. Thank you, Edgar. And uh, I, Professor Frederick Wanyama, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Research and Student Affairs at Kish University. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor and Kish University as a whole, I support the Streets for Life call to action, joining the global movement for low speed, even the communities wide world. Thank um, you. We can clap as the DBC signs the document uh, from where you are. As he makes his own commitment, we hope that you'll be able to have some time and also make that commitment. We will ensure that it comes to you. Uh, when I did this, you can just lift it up and show it to the camera mm -hmm. so that they can be able to see from where they are. That is his commitment, the Streets for Life commitment. The DVZ has made his, and we are looking forward that you will be able to make yours very soon, and we will be able to live by it. As you look at it, it's a good letter. It's, it's, it looks nice. You can frame it. You can uh, put, place it in your office somewhere, and it will assist, remind you of what is there to come. Thank you, Bona DVZ. Okay, at the moment, I would like to quickly turn over the program to Kelvin, who please, I will ask you to introduce yourself and then you take it from there, Governor Kelvin. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Edgar, for, uh, for this very good program that we have had. Uh, thank you for the commitment that uh, the university has shown as it pertains road safety issues not only with uh, the fact that uh, the roads, the UN Road Safety Week is happening this week, but even before, we've seen that uh, you've been one of our partners that have uh, really, really um, joined in, in road safety efforts in different ways. And we are really grateful. Uh, I can tell you that uh, from our office, uh, Kisi University is known as uh, probably the leading university as it pertains to the issues of road safety and the seriousness with which you have been taking uh, all activities that uh, pertain to road safety. So we are very grateful. Uh, before I start, I also want to thank the management of Kisi University, led by the VC, 
represented by the DVC here. And we really want to say that we are grateful for that you have quickly uh, gotten to know that road safety is a shared responsibility and it does not have to just come from NTSA or to come from uh, the police or to come from the people who deal with road safety directly. And that road safety is a message that should be preached everywhere where we live. And we are very grateful. And again, we are very grateful that you have signed the commitment for the UN Road Safety Week to ensure that we advocate for slower speeds uh, in our streets and in places where there is basically interaction between what we call motorized transport and non-motorized transport. Over time, we have seen that uh, uh, motorcycles and even vehicles speed very fast in areas which are full of people, in areas that are very dangerous and they can um, cause injury and sometimes they even cause death. So we are really uh, are grateful to see the commitment uh, that you're giving to this. I want to put up my presentation. I don't know if um, I've been enabled to do that. Um, and I don't know if you need to check the one that is there now. Okay, you can go yeah. ahead. Nice. Um, Can you can you see it? Yes. Nice. So I will be I will be very quick because uh, I understand that uh, a, a part and parcel of this meeting is uh, management and probably some staff and also probably the road safety committee of KC University, and so I will be going very high level so that I will not take a lot of uh, in this meeting. Most of the matters we discuss is. Uh, the committee, they know uh, the basic issues around road safety. So it will just be like a reminder and also as a way of marketing the UN Road Safety Week. So basically we we'll look at uh, uh, the road safety situation globally and in Kenya in very brief terms. We we'll look at the risk factors and some of the interventions that are being taken. Then we'll just touch by passing the significance of road safety mainstreaming, which is something that we've been doing. And and where most of these collaborations have emanated from. And then we look at the role of management in road safety, as well as role of staff in enhancing road safety. I know you might not have brought all your staff here, but it would be good for the management that are represented here to know what are the roles of their staff uh, as it pertains road safety and, and as it pertains road safety mainstream. Um, an introduction of NTSA and that NTSA is a state corporation under the Ministry of Interior. Basically, since 2019, we have been under the Ministry of Interior. We are, we are established under an act of parliament in 2012. And um, later on, we started our operations probably around 2014. And basically, the goal was to harmonize the operations of key transport departments in the country so that they are not scattered all over. Be before, I think you remember, we had uh, different functions of uh, 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 transport subsector in Kenya in, at different, some of them were in KRA, some of them were with the police, some of them uh, were in the, the Ministry of Transport. Now they are under one roof, and that has really helped uh, to try and improve and also come up with policy on issues that pertain to uh, road safety in our country. And basically, the establishment of the authorities in line with the global action, action plan on the UN decade of action. We had the first decade of action 2011 2020 that even Edgar alluded to as he read the commitment. And we have a new uh, uh, UN decade of action now, 2021 uh, 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 to 2030. And we endeavor to ensure that Kenya will be among the countries that will achieve. Um, as many um, as many targets as, as possible. Some of our functions, which you already know, we register motor vehicles, we regulate public service vehicles, we advise the government on national policy with regard to the transport sector, as well as coming up with road safety strategies and implementing the same. We facilitate public education of members of public in conjunction with uh, many other uh, 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 institutions.
institutions, we endeavor to do research and audits on road safety, and we really call on uh, the university, uh, uh, the universities, especially Kisi uh, University. And I know we have had these discussions uh, with the committee and Edgar around how can we ensure that we do some research around road safety and that. Uh, you, your university can, you know, have a priority area of research as road safety. Uh, at the same time, ensuring that uh, um, we come up with probably short-term courses and long-term courses as well that uh, touch on road safety, so that someone can take probably a diploma, a degree, and probably even a postgraduate in the area of road safety. We know road safety is a relatively new area but we want to promote it as much as we can. We compile inspection uh, reports relating to traffic accidents. Uh, you know that when you're involved in a crash, we have to uh, review your vehicle and we conduct an inspection. We formulate and review the curriculum of driving schools. And I know even for uh, you people, very soon we'll be sitting down with us and probably other experts to try and come up with a curriculum with which we can use to do those uh, road safety trainings or road safety uh, programs that we endeavor to have. We coordinate the activities of persons and organizations dealing in matters that pertain to road safety. So if you're dealing in matters road safety, we accredit you, we register you, and we partner together because as we have seen that road safety is a shared responsibility. A bit about the global situation of road safety is that we lose about 1.3 million people. And this leaves up to 50 million people or more injured or disabled in, in one way or the other. As we have seen, is that road traffic injury is the leading contributor to disability globally. And the issue has been elevated so much, has come up so much, that it is now part of the top 10 causes of death globally, which leads to about uh, 3,500 people dying every day globally from uh, this road traffic injury issue. Most of these fatalities, which is over 90% of them, they occur in low uh, income countries or in developing countries, despite those countries having very low motorization levels. And it is because of the human error that has been constantly happening. And, 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 and this is what we want to handle, even with the declarations that we are signing, to ensure that we can we can reduce the number of people that are losing their lives or are getting injured on our roads. Road traffic injury has now become the part of the leading cause of death across all ages. Yeah, across all ages, road traffic injury is now uh, increasingly being recognized as as part of the lead uh, cause of death uh, among all ages. Um. Again, we see that deaths from road transport exceed those from probably HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria globally. And this was uh, given by the World Bank in 2014. Remember, road traffic can cause deaths by road traffic injury. It can also cause deaths by pollution. And it can also cause uh, many other issues, as we talked about uh, the issue of quality of life because of a uh, 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 poor road transport and issues around that. Area. Injuries and pollution from vehicles also contribute to the top 10 causes of death uh, globally. And if we do nothing about road traffic injury, if we just sit and wait, it will have moved to fifth place from ninth place as a, co a cause of death uh, globally by the year 2030. In the slide that you see in front of you, you see a comparison between 2004 and uh, 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 the projected issue by 2030 of road traffic injuries. It will have moved to number five. And we are saying that probably about 2.4 million people uh, will be dying every year if we do not act accordingly. And part, part, part and parcel of the challenge is that we already predict that uh, by the year 2030, more than half of the populations of the world will be living in cities. And this is a, a, a great worry because then it will mean that uh, uh, this problem of road traffic injuries might even, you know, be 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 even in, 
even worse because people will be living in cities and you know cities have certain characteristics that expose the inhabitants more to road traffic injuries as opposed to probably rural areas and other areas. In the African situation, we have seen that if you compare Africa to Europe, you will see the number of fatalities that occur as opposed to Europe. And you see the number of vehicles that those people own. And this is the comparison I was talking about. You see in Africa, about 46.6 vehicles per 1,000 people while the number of fatalities is about 27 per every 100,000 compared to Europe, which has about 500 vehicles per 1,000 people. And the fatality rate is about 9.3. Actually, this has been updated. It's about 8.7 per 100,000 population. So this is a worrying trend on that we might not be taking the issue as seriously as it might, as it, need to, it needs to be taken because we have lower motorization levels and yet we they are killing more people. And we say that the problem has been compounded by the issue of underreporting of data, which is estimated to be around four times. And I think you have seen this continually even in our country, where we find that the data that we report in our uh, 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 official data for fatalities, it is not representative of the issue. And NTSA is taking this up, and we are coming up with a proper system that we are working with different partners uh, and even including development partners that uh, then will help us to be able to come up with a system that can reflect what is happening on, 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 on the ground, can reflect the number of people that are dying so that the government can start investing the right resources in that area. The road situation in Kenya, about 3,000 to 4,000 uh, people dying uh, uh, every year and these it is about an economic loss of about 350 billion. Yeah, about 40% or even more. And we saw that this has increased in the last two years is that between 40 to 70% are vulnerable road users. Vulnerable road users in Kenya are, you know, the border borders, the motorcycles, the, and the pedestrians. Those are the ones that are affected mostly in Kenya. And we know that road crashes are the highest contributors to disability. As I said, they are big health burden. You know, when you go to hospitals, you can see the health burden that uh, road traffic injury uh, causes uh, uh, in those areas. And then it leads to loss of able breadwinners, which is an issue uh, that has become a big problem. And basically it leads to poverty because when you lose a breadwinner, then there is no provision of <coughs> what is required for that family. A bit of statistics here, and we see there's a comparison between the statistics in 2020 and 2019. In absolute, the number of people who died, the number of people who were seriously injured, and the number of people who were slightly injured. And for the fatalities, there was an increase of 10.8% between 2019 and 2020. The seriously injured also increased by about 15% slightly injured reduced but overall the total number of people uh, who are affected by road traffic injury increased by about 7.8 percent this is uh, now statistics are showing the victim types and we see the issue that i was discussing about around pedestrians and motorcycles as well as uh, the issue around pillion passengers pillion passengers are the passengers on a, on a motorbike and basically when you see you will if you get the number of people who are in a pillion or a pillion passengers and you add them up to motorcyclists you find that this number was above 1500 people uh last year only and you see pedestrian pedestrians were around 1383 meaning that those two categories of of of, of road users were really affected in that year. This is basically fatalities in December. And the reason why we show this is we always want to show that during uh, what we call, uh, during the, 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 the festive season, the number of fatalities uh, really increases, which is uh, something that we need to look at and uh, probably ask ourselves, what are some of the things that we can do so that we improve uh, the issue 
of the of fatalities and reduction of the same. You need to be very careful when it comes to the, 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 the festivities because people drive drunk. And so we see the numbers always increase. You can see an increase of about 12.84% of the number of people who are either injured, slightly injured, or fatality. When we look at the days, the, the vehicle types, we see that our private vehicles are increasingly now leading, but motorcycles are, are overtaking them, you know? Uh, and I know this graph was done at the end of 2020. Right now, we are seeing that motorcycles have overtaken the private vehicles. And this is something that is worrying. We need to find a way with which we can talk to our young people. Government has already instituted quite a raft of measures to ensure that we take care of the issue, but it is a collective responsibility and we would wish to join hands and do it. When you look at this graph, is basically the fatalities by times of the day. And basically, as we move towards the end of the day, then the fatalities increase at a, at, with a very high margin. And this is because of visibility issues. Actually, we call this a visibility graph. And at, around this time, visibility is a big challenge and we really need to look at it. And one of the issues, maybe just to remind the members in this, in this training or this sensitization is that we need to be careful around this time, but also we need to ensure that we are visible. We need to have our lights on. We need to, if you are walking, you need to have your, your uh, reflective jackets on. If you're riding in a, in a motorcycle, you need to have your, your safety gear on because at this time, people are not able to see you properly and it leads to more fatality. When you look at the days of the week, uh, uh, in, the, in, 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 in 2020, we see that Sun was leading in, 20, in, in, in 2019, but when it comes to 2020, then Wednesday was leading. And this is worrying because it tells you something happens while we move towards the weekend. I don't know, people get excited and then it becomes a problem. When you look at the month, the, the counties of Kenya, we see that the first four counties are always the most affected. That is Nairobi, Nakuru, Kiambu, and Machakos. But we are seeing the problem further down in other counties like Kweni, other counties like Narok, other counties even like C, like yours. And this is a worrying trend. We need to ensure that we protect protect our people. When we look at fatalities by age, we see that people between the age of 20, 24, and probably 40 to 44 years are the most affected. And remember, this is the cream of society. This is at uh, the time that people are most productive. And instead of them being productive, then they are being affected by road traffic injury in a big way. And that's where you see we are trying to elevate the issue to, so that everyone is able to understand and that we can combine our efforts together and save lives. When you look at uh, fatalities by gender, and probably this is a larger discussion, even between them, the two genders represented here, we see that 83.2% of all fatalities are male and about 16.8 are female. So this is a worrying trend we have seen that the male gender has been affected by statistics in different areas. It also has been affected by suicide. It has been affected by COVID. It has been affected by, uh, you know, other issues. And so um, uh, uh, road traffic injury, uh, the, the male gender has also led in this area and probably is because road safety, road, the challenge is road user behavior, you know, and road user behavior ensures is the issue that we are trying to deal with. And the challenge is how do you change road user behavior? How do you change the behavior of a person in how they drive? Because the, the challenge could be, is not that the, the vehicle they're driving as a challenge or the road. Mostly you find it is just how they decide to you know, carry themselves on the road. Is them who over speed, is them who are involved in different, uh, you know, issues. And road user behavior accounts for 98% of road crashes. You see the issues of speeding, careless driving, drink driving, jaywalking, drink riding, fatigue driving, distracted driving and aggressive driving, among many others. That is what we call road user behavior. And it is what we account to human er error. 
we need to be able to understand why uh, is how can we be able to communicate the road safety message in a way that people are able to change behavior. Remember how the government joined hands together and was able to deal with the HIV issue? We need to be able to join hands together and deal with this. Remember the two issues are behavioral, whichever way you look at it. It is behavior on both sides, either HIV or rotic. Just a quick slide to see how speed affects us. And, and I think most of you know this, that the higher the speed with which you get into a crash, the more forceful and damaging it will be, and the higher the risk of you getting an injury that probably takes your life or, 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 or gives you an injury that confines you even to a wheelchair. Number two is that as you increase your speeds, you narrow the, the field of vision. Yeah, You can see there in this, in this graph that at 25 miles per hour, the field of vision is 100 degrees. But as you increase the the, the, sorry, as you increase the field of vision to about uh, 45 miles per hour, which is about probably 65 kilometers per hour, it reduces to about 65, and you are not even able to see the people who are on the side of the road. Number three is that the higher the speed, the further you travel before you can react. When you're moving at a very high speed before you react, the vehicle has traveled further, and sometimes you may not be able to stop it. Number four is that the higher the speed, the longer the braking distance. So you can see as you increase speed, it takes longer for the vehicles to be able to slow down. Let's look at risk factors very quickly. And basically the, the issues could be either vehicle related where you're talking about road worthiness, vehicle inspection and serviceability, could be infrastructure issues where you're talking about black spots due to poor road design, lack of signage, lack of road markings, lack of road lighting, lack of non-motorized facilities, among other issues. And then there's coordination and management issues where we talk up, we say that coordination, collaboration, and cooperation is very key among players. And that's why we are calling on everyone to join hands. So these risk factors are broken into two. There is the risk factors that I'm showing the three of you, and then there is what we call the human error. Human error accounts for about 98%. The rest is now motor vehicle related issues, infrastructure issues, or coordination issues. Let's now move to uh, some of the interventions that are happening is that we normally join hands with the police to try and do enforcement, education of the public, and engineering to ensure safer roads. We strengthen regulations in the road transport sector to ensure that uh, we do what is right. And as a regulator, that is part and parcel of our mandate. We reform and professionalize driving schools. Remember that before driving schools did not have a curriculum, were not validated. Now we take uh, our validation exercises and there is a curriculum to uh, be able to train uh, trainee drivers. We have reformed the motorcycle public uh, service sector. We might not be there yet, but we have started that process and that uh, we are already doing the counties of Kiambu, Kajado, and Machakos, and we'll be moving to other counties where we are partnered with NYS to be able to train all border borders and to be able to license them properly, to be able to do public education on them. So that now when they start doing the enforcement, they understand exactly what is happening. Sorry, um, there's some noise. Okay, continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. And then there's enhancing road safety management and coordination. I think I talked about that, promoting safer vehicles and ensuring that vehicle standards are the right standards. And this is that we are doing up to the regulation level. There's a regulation that will be coming out and it will be looking at improving vehicle standards that are imported into the country. And then there is improving post-crash and emergency response uh, and then road safety mainstreaming. And I think you know this very well in, in MDAs. And we have also started doing road safety mainstreaming even with counties. There are counties that have even requested for the same. And then we have heavy commercials that are also undertaking the process of screening. PSVs as well, we simplify uh, mainstreaming for them so that it's more of standard operating procedures that pertains to road safety as well. 
opposed to the very detailed mainstreaming that agencies like you are able to undertake. Let's dive into mainstreaming, and I'll just touch on a very few areas. Basically, road safety mainstreaming is a multi-sectoral approach, which uh, tries to ensure that road safety becomes an integral part of all government programs. And basically what you want to do is reduce, substantially reduce the number of, you know, the burden of road crashes and fatalities in our country. And the reason why we are doing that is we want there to be able to be pro increased productivity. We want our employees to be able to be safe. We want to reduce the cost of operation of our fleets. We want to reduce the total number of people who are affected by road traffic crashes in our country. You know, we want to ensure that there are fewer days lost due to injury and any that is touching on it. We want to minimize the chance of employees being blacklisted, you know, and suspended because of a, a, a traffic offenses. We want to ensure that decisions are made that are informed around the issues such as driver training, vehicle purchase and maintenance. And these are, I know these are decisions that are made in your organization every day. We want to be able to identify where road safety improvements can be made. We always say that road safety improvements can always be made. We want to protect staff and reduce stress and improve workplace morale. We want to ensure that the public has confidence in government business as it pertains to in the way that we protect ourselves. And of course, at least and not uh, last and not least is that we want to enhance the culture of safe driving. We want everyone to come into this area and ensure that the culture of safe driving is promoted by everyone. Let's look at the second part of this presentation. And in this part, we will look at uh, responsibilities of uh, different tiers of management in your organization. And we will start with what we call the board of directors. Um, in your organizations, it could be the board of directors, it could be the Senate, but is that is those high organs of your organization that uh, make decisions. And one is to provide a strategic direction in the implementation of the road safety policy. Remember, uh, part and parcel and Edgar said this, that the road safety policy is almost being approved. The implementation of the same is supported by the board of directors. Two is oversight and mobilize resources for the implementation of the policy. Uh, we need to take this role with uh, the weighted trust that we mobilize resources for road safety and road safety initiatives. Demonst demonstrate a concern for the number of road deaths that are occurring and a commitment to, post to foster improvements in the organization. If we find that the highest organ of the organization is agreeing to this, is saying that we are losing so many people. What can you do? We do not want the people that we are losing to be part of the university. Then that concern will now be taken up by everyone in the organization and you are able to you know, start taking some activities that you do to make sure that your staff or your management is not in. Let's look at uh, uh, the next uh, uh, level of management. And in your case, it could be uh, around the VCs of office. But in other organization, it could be the CEOs, the DGs, and the MD. In your case, it will be the VC. And we say one of his respons the responsibilities of that office is to constitute the road safety committee, which has been done, which is meant to coordinate the activities of road safety streaming. And that has been done very well, and they have supported them. They have even sponsored for a training for the members. Which, which was amazing. They should, that office also provides leadership for the development and implementation of effective road safety policies and work plan. Remember there's a policy that has been developed and very soon, once you approve it, then it will be implemented. We pro that office should also provide support and leadership for road safety campaigns and also mobilize resources for the same, targeting different road users. That office also should integrate and mainstream road safety issues in the university and in all its operations. It is the lead office to be able to show leadership 
as it pertains the mainstreaming of road safety in, that, in, in, your, in your university. It also provides support and facilitates regular forums between stakeholders and the agency to prevent road traffic injuries. Some of those programs could be what we are doing today. It facilitates staff to participate in national and international forums on road safety. I think we are already participating in one of the international forums when we are doing the UN Road Safety Week. It approves the development and implement and review of the policies that pertain to road safety, that approval comes from that level. It provides an accountable, accountable for success. It's accountable for successful implementation of the road safety policy. It ensures allocation of sufficient resources to implement road safety actions. It also strengthens the commitment to the road safety, road safety at all levels of money. That office is very, very important. The office of the VC is very important in providing that kind of support. And in your organization, I can say that I have seen a commitment that probably I've not seen in many other organizations, especially from the office of the VC and even your DVCs. They always participate in our, in our activities and we are very grateful for that. Let's look at the part of the responsibilities of heads of department and directors or even section, section managers. And I know we have representation of such kind of management in this meeting. One is to communicate and implement the road safety policy, work plans and in respective departments. Remember when the policy will come out and also the committees as a work plan that is implementing, we need the heads of the depart departments to support the same encourage staff under them to participate in road safety activities. That kind of encouragement is provided by heads of department and heads of different directorates. Ensure a continuous enforcement of road safety uh, uh, policy. The road safety policy will come into play. It might outlaw some things, it might support some things. So issues to do with drunk driving, speeding, belting up, vehicle maintenance, etiquette, driver welfare, fatigue management, journey planning, all these issues, directors, heads of department need to come out very strong to ensure that those issues are, are supported. They continuously create awareness on road safety to their staff under their jurisdiction. Remember, if you are head of a directorate, you are head of department, you are head of certain division, you are, you are now a road safety champion and your work is to rally the staff under you to understand that road safety is a very important issue. Identify staff who contravene the road safety policy, its aspiration, as well as take the appropriate action that is, that is part of your roles. Then there is monitoring and evaluation issues of the programs and the work plans that have been cascaded to your departments. You are the ones who are supposed to provide that information either to the committee or to the office of the VC. Then promote safe practices in fleet operation. One of the issues is that we want fleets to be able to operate very efficiently and very safely to ensure that even the budgets that you put into your transport departments uh, are able to come down and you're able to redirect those resources to other issues, that there can be a lot of efficiency in that, which will then increase the uh, what we call productivity because staff are, are taken uh, care of properly in terms of transport. Heads of departments also support road safety training, education, induction programs to produce safe road users. Part and parcel of, of, of what we are saying is that uh, road safety training and education, and as well as induction, should become part and parcel of your daily work so that if, even when you have new staff, road safety becomes part and parcel of induction so that people understand from the day one that this organization is very dear, takes road safety very seriously. And so as, 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 as I work here, I need to ensure that I promote road safety ideas. Then the last and not the least is to ensure that they, rec they recognize good yeah, if you find that some of your staff are showing a lot of commitment, please recognize them. Give even letters of recognition. It doesn't have to be anything that involves a budget. Give the staff a letter of recognition 
for being a, a, a road safety champion or taking road safety seriously and also reward good driving where you are able to identify especially around your drivers reward them tell them that this reward has been given because of you and the way you have been promoting road safety and that will really really help let's look at the role of staff uh, and i know there is a bit of staff uh, uh, probably represented here but it's also important for management to know what is the role of staff one is compliance with the policy staff are expected to comply with the with the workplace road safety policy two is that they are supposed to practice safe road user behavior and skills which is part and probably parcel of the constant kind of sensitization that the committee will undertake to ensure they produce a safer road user uh, uh, in staff. Three is make a personal commitment to improve road safety by adopting a more courteous and considerable road behavior. And part and parcel of this, even now that we are in the road, UN Road Safety Week, is to print out the posters that you, we've given you and tell your staff, sign these posters. Make a commitment to be a safer road user. Make a commitment to be a champion of road safety. And then you put those posters in your department notice board notice books and you share the same on your social media pages and you tag us that will ensure that staff feel involved in every of your activities as it pertains road safety and they feel that they are given a commitment and they will take it very seriously then there's to monitor and report non-compliance we know that sometimes there is non-compliance you find that some people are over speeding they are not belting up any crashes that might happen, and among other non-compliance issues, it is the responsibility of staff to be able to monitor as well as report. Them. Staff also are required to read, understand, and adhere to the policy document. We know the policy is, is going to come into place very soon. And as much as they have been given the opportunity to be able to give their views, once the document is out, they need to understand it. It needs to be publicized. Communication needs to come into place so that they are able to adhere to the policy in totality. Then there is to embrace a safe road user culture that minimizes road traffic crashes and injuries. If we adopt a culture of safe road use, we will minimize road traffic crashes. And a very important role of staff is to provide peer-to-peer -peer support on road safety. This is very, very important. And this, and, and this is across, this is cross-cutting, no matter which level of management you might be, provide that peer-to-peer -peer support. If you see your friend is getting lost a bit, is not driving very well, is very proud of speeding kindly, give them peer-to-peer -peer support. This is very, very, very important. You could just have saved a life. Yeah, of your colleague or of your acquaintance or someone that of your lab work, basically. So that kind of peer-to-peer -peer support is very important. And what we are saying is that you need to be able to drive defensively, that there are others who want you to be around, there are others who need you, and there are others who depend on you. And even taking it into the context of your organization, we do not want any staff, any part of management, to lose their lives or to be injured in the process of doing their work. That then creates a bigger problem because there are people who expect you to deliver some certain duties to them. There are people who expect you to give certain approvals and, and to support them in the work that uh, they are doing. So we say there are many others who love you and who are around you and they need you and they depend on you. So when you're taking your actions, you need to be very careful and know that you are not only taking them for yourself, you're also taking them because they are others. So thank you very much. I did not get caught in a crash or in an accident. Make sure that you become a champion for road safety. Ensure that anytime you see an issue, you're able to report it either to your road safety committee or to the management of the, of the university so that the action is taken as soon as possible. I thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much for taking time to attend this session. I'm going to take probably a bit of questions uh, that might come up.
Uh, you can also post your questions on the wall and I hope probably I'll be able to see them. So at this juncture, I will allow any questions, concerns, comments, even contribution and suggestions. You know, these forums give us a good opportunity to be able to take suggestions from uh, partners uh, like you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, members, you've uh, listened to the presentation. Uh, the permission of the GVC, I would uh, open the floor if there is uh, any question, comment, or uh, a word from uh, any member who wants to share before we move towards completing the program. If you have that, just unmute yourself and continue. So maybe if I can go first, I uh, wish to thank you, Mr. Ngobo, for taking us through this sensitization. And I'm um, glad especially because there is a huge representation from the academic division and there's the aspect of uh, short trainings which you intended, you informed us about. So I hope uh, the responsible teams and the members from the academic division will be able to take this up and explore possibility of uh, as as uh, Kisi University collaborating with NTSA to jumpstart some of these uh, short trainings, so then we can be able to reach out to a bigger population. Also, I think I'm seeing representation from the Office of Registrar Research and Extension. Remember, we are also reaching out to community. Uh, so as we are doing our community extension uh, activities, I hope uh, representatives from the research and extension office are uh, able to also maybe borrow a leaf or so and see a possibility of uh, reaching out to the community as they conduct their other extension work and also sensitize the community on matters road safety thank you thank you madam chair thank you for the comments and uh, as uh, also kevin mentioned a uh, huge part of the University's contribution towards making the road safety, uh, road, our road safe is uh, uh, supporting research idea, ideas into, into this. So if we can have uh, our research department and our academic community uh, look into studying this as a topic and uh, contribute into ways of uh, supporting uh, uh, road safety practices and tendencies, I, I am sure NTSA will appreciate that. And even the road safety committee will appreciate getting feedback like that so that you can use it uh, for better practices in, in the coming. So the academic community that is present, your contribution is invaluable and, and we support and it's it's good thing we have the DVC academic research and uh, student affairs. It's almost like we have the right person in the, in the room to assist us uh, move, move forward in the, in the best way possible. Uh, any other question or comment or uh, what from uh, members who are listening? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, Professor, we can hear you. Yeah, okay, let me just uh, make a contribution. Uh, first of all, let me thank the, the presenter for a very nice uh, presentation and also NPSA for coming to share with us the, 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 you know, <clears throat> the, tra the traffic, uh, you know, the safety rules and policies and the, you know, the messages. But uh, let me just say <clears throat> that when do, we, why do we have rules and the laws and the prisons and the, all those kind of things? It is because they expected there will be lawbreakers and therefore they need to be demotivated from doing it. And they are, the one way of doing it is punishing them. Now, I think <clears throat> it is a, first of all, let me say it's, it's a sad day that uh, we are talking about the road safety when actually we lost already a student uh, through the, the, the motor, motorbike accident. Uh, I think the problem with our, I mean, why we have been unable to stop this uh, carnage of the roads, it is because of uh, mainly one item. The way we punish our 
road uh, misusers, if I may use that term, is actually what promotes the being, the, 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 the misbehavior. NTSA, they should partner more or less with the police or maybe get their own power. Such that any lawbreaker in terms of a road use, depending on the, 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 the level of the, 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 the crime you have used that term, you have different you know, measures. When a driver is involved in an accident through this careless driving, just cancel the license. Don't leave this idea of a just a, to say you are going to take somebody to, to, to the to the to the to the you know to 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 to, to court or you know the, the fine to the police. They don't work because okay, I'm caught uh, you know wrong driving by the police, and I'm supposed to pay uh, ten thousand instant fine. I'll just talk to the police because of the corruption. I'll talk to the police and tell them why you wait and then if this one thousand why you in the lane. I'm laughing that they, you know, I think uh, you know, you see, the next day I'll still do the you feel the same. Yes, us as a university can contribute in terms of passing messages, which of course any anyway, I have had I've talked about the policies and so we cannot implement the policy anyway because we don't have the power. We cannot even if our driver. I mean, our staff, uh, if you look at the accident, we can't punish that fellow. We can cause our drivers, by way of either sucking them or punishing them in other ways. Then drivers, the university for drivers, all right, we can deal with them. But our staff, we can only pass messages. So strengthen your acts, come up with measures, which are, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, good enough to deter. When you get somebody driving when he's drunk, stop negotiating with the fellow. Just have that fellow either the road, you know, when somebody knows that they, once I'm caught, my road license, that will be the end of it. I can tell you that will be even deter more than, than just to take his up on court and they saying that, they, you know, uh, uh, then I, I'm driving, you know, the police will drive in court today. It is, it is, I mean, we have to, we have been to court. We see when drivers, when police, even around our people, they you know on the streets, they go to the court there. Even one who is not who was not wrong, who was a person accused, the judge just says yes or no. When you say yes, okay, fine. When you say no, where can I? Simple. That. So people just tend to say yes, 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 even when they are not wrong. Those, I think, we need here to revisit our traffic laws, that's where the problem is, and that's what the solution is. Uh, so I would have talked more, but I think that's, uh, you know, my contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. And uh, uh, Kevin, I hope you got that. That is coming I? from our Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration Planning yes. and Finance. So those are serious comments from one of our university managers. Yeah, I would like to comment on those as we get more. Of, uh, of, of the issues coming in. And I agree with the DVC that enforcement is a key area in being able to deter. Uh, that I totally, totally, totally agree. Uh, probably the only challenge we've had is uh, that we are not in enforcement anymore, is not part of our mandate. But nevertheless, we, what we've decided to do is leverage on technology as we go along. So today, when you look at uh, quite a number of things that we have been doing, is that we are creating an, in, an IT infrastructure. And I think you even saw we launched a new transport integrated management, a revamped one, the system that we use. And what we are building towards is to be able to do what we call even desktop enforcement, which is even very effective as opposed to, you know, trying to enforce on the roads. And those things of cancelling DLs, we will do them. And we will have very good evidence that is coming from the systems that we want to create. All the documents that we are giving you today, the, 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 third, the, the third identifier, the sticker that you put on your screen, we are almost now issuing what we call the new generation number plates. They will, all of them have some certain sensors and certain chips in them, 
we'll be able to pick up people who over speed, even without being on the road. We'll be able to pick out offenders of all manner, and we'll put sensors on the road, and we will gazette them so that people stop saying that, you know, NTSA is hiding in the bush. There is no hiding in the bush anymore because you cannot hide away from the system. We will be able to capture every and each person that is having a vehicle that is registered by us. And that way, akuna mali akuhepa. Shikwa, you are told that you, you are overspeeding, you are given your instant fight. Remember the instant fight system is coming back. You are sent an SMS, you are told the instant fight has fined you 50,000 or whatever amount of money that you've been fined, you've been given three weeks to pay. So that we reduce the interaction with people. You know, DVC is talking about the corruption that takes place because of interaction of people. That interaction of people is what we will limit. So once you make a fine, you refuse to pay your fine, our rent of arrest is then issued for you. Or your DL is just cancelled to begin with as you continue to sort out your, your case. When you finish your case and the court uh, says that you get back your DL, that first is punishment enough. Yeah. So we are developing a robust uh, uh, IT platform that we'll be able to use to do some of this enforcement because we know where the problem is. The problem is the fact that during enforcement, there's a lot of problems that are happening there. And this is our country. So we are not to say me to do in Nafanika. We know what is happening. And that's why we want to be able to do it in that kind of a way. Uh, again, um, I, I want to, you know, each, uh, just give my condolences to you, to the student that uh, you lost in that uh, motorbike uh, accident. Uh, it is very sad to see young people uh, losing their lives in, in, in such a manner. So we, we join you in mourning uh, uh, that colleague of yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Kelvin. Uh, any other further comments uh, uh, for our benefit uh, for all of us on the floor? Okay, I'll give it to the DVC. Uh, uh, kindly, Asana. maybe before. Yes. Before you give you give to the, the to the VC to the DVC kindly. I yes. was just requesting, uh, is it possible that you share the content you've been presenting kindly? Yeah, yes, yes, I will share the same immediately after, after this. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Kevin, for the presentation. And uh, I'd like to our uh, road. Uh, yes, we can do sensitization, training, short courses uh, through our community outreach program. Uh, we have done this before, it was at the lower scale. Uh, we think two years ago or so, we were trying to sensitize the water water community around campus about uh, proper use of the roads and minimizing accidents. As we are pointed out uh, today in Kenya, perhaps uh, the borders are causing uh, quite significant proportion of damage. And uh, that is happening likely because uh, most of the motorcycle riders, they don't go to driving school. We simply learn how to ride a motorcycle and die on the road. So there is some time to this part or so we are trying to change the uh, around that so that uh, we save the lives of our students that frequently use those motorcycles. So it's something that we have uh, uh, tried on, but I think we should do much uh, more by targeting other road users uh, around the community. Um, also, uh, helping any other, any other person who may, who may require uh, some basic uh, training. So it's something that we should do. Uh, 
do our research and extension. So we will, uh, we will uh, uh, we did something to us that direction. And uh, when else we make a contribution in that way, uh, I'm happy with the what Andrew is doing now by digitizing our registration numbers, uh, digitizing our driving license. Uh, that is a, a step in the right direction, but there are still some more some more challenges. Where these systems are working well is where everybody is known where he or she lives. Uh, maybe you, this may go beyond NTSA, but it's something that you must do. So that you have proper address of uh, the owners of the vehicles. If you go to another place, you may discover that uh, field box 402 PC you could have registered a thousand vehicles around it, and if you trace where the thousand vehicles are, and I'm not just using that as, a, as an institution, this, this, some of those boxes are actually private, and uh, there are so many vehicles that are holding that postal address. If you go into fiscally getting where this pool, these people are, where they are, in terms of but in, in, in other systems, Everybody has an address, a residential address. These postal boxes are not enough. So that's a, it's something that's beyond it, but something that we should, we, should, we should be pushing to have residential addresses. Uh, so, so that when I have a ticket for violating some regulation, uh, the address should be written where I have to decide. And if I don't pay, they know where to come. They come to my residence. Instead of looking for the vehicle on the roads, you go for the person in the residence. And uh, the people there are behaving somehow with that uh, discipline. Uh, so that, but but um, I'm happy that you are starting on that direction. Then we should be in the right way soon. And the uh, people will be knowing that there is now proper enforcement of the regulations. Uh, I have my colleague in the BBC uh, talking about punishment. Uh, punishment, yes, but it does not work all, all the ways. Well, sometimes uh, you may want also to, to encourage the behavior change uh, through campaigns, awareness, and so on. So to combine uh, awareness as well, post punishment is there. We have a better way of tracking each together the driver up to the address, the residential address where they are using technology then we should be in the right direction. Uh, I think we're actually we focusing on people. Uh, we should also be thinking about the infrastructure itself. Uh, some, some accidents are caused by infrastructure more than uh, my behavior. Um, but I must say that uh, relative to the 90s, 1990s, uh, or even 1980s, the road network is improving in Kenya. So we hope that that may, may help, may, may guide us, but we still have a lot to go. So we should do NTSA, we should also be exerting some pressure anywhere. I know that you are your work cannot extend to making roads, but uh, it is uh, uh, just a matter of sensitizing those who make roads. But uh, things are not okay. So we also need infrastructure improvement uh, to make roads uh, easier to use. And the easier they become to use, the safer they become. And so uh, that's also another task that is beyond the same, but we need to have people sensitized in every stakeholder. So the other stakeholder is the government, public works, 
who are in charge of the infrastructure that we should be able to improve on that. Uh, but uh, again, as we pressurize other people, uh, we should also be thinking about the provision of uh, stable and sustainable public transport system. I think the delivering public transport to the private sector has also had uh, safety on the roads. The way the manner in which uh, the matatus behave has been more dangerous than any other behavior. And the matatus have had a new way because of the lack of a stable public transport system. So uh, again, uh, our discussions, especially with the NPSS, heading in that direction of providing a stable public transport system. And uh, once that system is in place, the matter will just fade away. Uh, even, even the motorcycle will also just fade away because uh, nobody will be seeing the need for jumping on the motorcycle. When there is a, a bus that is coming at a cheaper rate, with the predetermined time and schedule that it follows. Uh, at some point in Nairobi, it was there. Uh, how we lost it? It used to be very easy in the 80s to navigate uh, the estate of Nairobi. You could go to all of them in a single day and at a very cheaper cost. But we lost it, so we need to bring back the public transport system. Um, uh, at least the rail network is uh, we, are, we are trying to move beyond 1901. <laughs> so, 1902, we get the first rail road laid. Uh, I, I, I hope that maybe the, the public, no, 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 the city. But we should also be seeing this uh, done so that the uh, commuter trains uh, to be congested even uh, the vehicles from the roads and we make the roads uh, friendlier and, uh, and easier to use. And, and so these, these are some of the ideas that we need to be pushing. I know that it will be beyond our own individual capacity or institutional capacity. But when we put them on the table so that the uh, high decision makers keep on uh, being reminded, then uh, we will improve safety on the roads yeah. and they will reduce uh, the traffic on the roads. It will become more, more safer and more secure. As uh, the UN is uh, promoting, the roads should be uh, enjoyed or spent, not stressing. Or stressful to expenses. So I think those are my views so that if we, for, if we pursue the larger infrastructural goals, then we will enforce uh, the policies that we have put in place, to give a new technology, and uh, reorganize our uh, address system so that everybody is traceable, easy, and can be read. Then even the enforcement of uh, those who are red regulations become a bit easier. And it's only in that way that we can be sure that the roads will be So those are my views, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to come and share with us this, this, this discussion. And the uh, colleagues in the university we should pick up from there and along the lines that we have been sensitized on and see what we can contribute as management. Uh, as a staff and even as individuals in our own capacities, we are now more aware. So thank you very much. Thank you, my DVC. Uh, Kelvin, I don't know if you have uh, anything else to add uh, as we move towards the closing of uh, this session. Uh, thank you. Uh, probably just to make uh, one or two comments. And I really appreciate the the proposals that uh, I'm I'm getting from from your team, uh, the different areas, especially the, the issues around registration of addresses, 
the issues were around even registration of all border borders where they operate from and not only border borders is also drivers and, and and the PSV drivers as well uh the issues around NTSA being able to play a pivotal role in advisory of road design which we've started before we didn't have a uh, capability to be able to advise on the same but now we have a, uh, employed uh, road safety engineers who are now able to audit the designs even before they are built uh, the challenge is that sometimes in this country we have a design that was done 10 years ago being built now but now we have we are now coming into that space and we are giving our advisory before they put the plans to be so um that that is that is very 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 uh, important the and a bigger challenge that we face uh, and this we face as a as a country all of us is that uh, we do not have a proper public service transport system i keep saying that kenya does not have a, a public service transport system it's private it's not public so we need probably especially for the cities or for the counties the cities and counties for the areas that have high populations we need a proper public transport system being able to operate in those areas and we have seen that especially like around nairobi there are efforts uh, from uh, both namata and the nms to try and advance the same uh, we hope that that can you know can continue because we also need our cities to look advanced like other cities in the world so we are very grateful for that and we also urge you to continue reporting to us uh, uh, edgar and the team can can give you our numbers we want to be able to get reports of what is happening just send on whatsapp you know send to us on whatsapp send to us on our social media pages whichever when you send to me i immediately uh, you know post that to a group that we have with all police uh, in the country and they take up issues immediately so that we are able to avert some of the issues that uh, are on our road. Otherwise, is to really thank you and thank you for your contributions. I've taken quite a number of notes uh, as it pertains different areas and they will be discussing the same with our management. Some of them are issues that we've already raised. Some of them are new issues that are coming up and we are really grateful for it thank you thank you a lot for attending this sensitization now we will continue working together asante asante kevin uh, on our part dr nyanga i don't know if you can hear me uh, you help on behalf of the committee to issue a short vote of thanks to kelvin and the members of management and even the academic community and other staff who are here who have joined us in this training as we, we move forward uh, with other things. Uh, so Dr. Nyanga, uh, can you can you hear me? I think you are still inside. Yes. yes can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, good morning, dear members. Thank you very much for joining our committee, the Road Safety Committee, and on behalf of all the members and our chair, uh, Madam Rosa Gata. Uh, together with my colleagues, we want to really express our utmost thankfulness to the members of management led by the Vice Chancellor. Uh, the DVC ARSA, please pass our regards to the boss and tell him we are very thankful that we have embraced that road safety as a component of uh, safety within the university. I know it's a new area for all of us because we are road users, but we have not really looked at the research and the behavior changes and the psychology and the health aspects and everything we do in the university with regard to what we can do as an institution to making our community safer and our roads. So I begin, I believe this is a first uh, because I know NTSA work I think with Kim and Kenya School of Government, but I think as an institution of higher learning and a leader in the research field, this is a good area for all of us to encompass and we are working as a committee. This is our first year, and we look forward to having more and more collaborations vertically and horizontally. To Kevin and the team, thank you very much for being our partner since last year as NTSA. I know NTSA is mainly, mainly made up of young people, young spirited people. It's a great government initiative, and we look forward. Uh, so Karibuni Sana Kisi University, 
anytime you need to talk to us, uh, even virtually or is it physically, uh, you're welcome. So thank you very much to the chair of the committee uh, for taking lead and facilitating this. Thank you, Edgar, for being on top of your game with the PR and uh, all the <coughs> that are there. To Paul and Esther, you've worked on a great policy and we're looking forward to presenting it to management and finally to council so that uh, uh, we, are, we are among the first university to do so. And lastly, to the secretariat uh, of this committee who are the technocrats, um, Engineer Onkware, uh, Deputy Registrar Central Services, thank you very much for always taking lead of a great team that keeps us safe anytime we use the university vehicles and also making sure that uh, the environment within the university is safe, the, back, the parking, the bumps, and what have you. To my fellow colleagues, members of Senate, uh, esteemed learned uh, colleagues, my immediate supervisor, the DVC, IPNF, Asante Nisana for always supporting us in this, and Mbele um, Ikosawa, let's continue spreading the message. Uh, Mr. Luis Omwanda, you are a strong contender in social media. Anytime you post anything this week, always hashtag love 30 mm -hmm. so that we keep our roads safe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ari. Uh, uh, Dr. Atembo, uh, may I call upon you to assist us with the closing word of prayer? Uh, if you can, uh, you can hear us. Thank you, with us. Uh, hoping your device is as close. Dr. Atembo? Thank you, thank you, Edgar. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Almighty God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for all the deliberations that we have had this, this morning. We put everything in thy hands, and we pray that uh, all the things that we have discussed today, in a way, will be impactful on our roads. We pray all this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining. We shall continue the discussion offline with documents and other reports. And let's continue the campaign. We still are on the campaign mode. Share the photos, share the hashtag as we continue forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.